Matthew 7, 13, 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus made it abundantly clear for all that there are more people heading to hell than heading to heaven. Allow me to begin by saying that salvation is an individual journey. The days of group salvation are over. Group salvation means, unless we are all saved, none of us will be saved. The Bible is crystal clear. Salvation is an individual. Each person must come to Christ individually, not collectively. Let us look the parable of the wedding feast. Matthew 2, 2, 1, 3. And Jesus answered, and speak unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them, that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Now before we continue to read, let me give you some context. The king is God, the father and the son, who is being honored at the banquet is Jesus Christ, the servants are those who preach the gospel. Now the story says he sent out his servants to invite people to the wedding, and they would not come. This is a picture of what happens. Jesus Christ has invited people to go to heaven through his precious blood, which he shared on the cross, to gather around that great supper table in heaven. God the Father has invited them. He has sent his people with the gospel to get people saved. But the people won't come. But we aren't focusing on those people that won't come. We are focusing on the people that do come, but try to enter in heaven a different way than the way prescribed by God. Let us continue. Matthew 22, 4, 14. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrath, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then say if he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as he shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Now I want us to focus on verse 11. It reads, And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. What you need to understand is that, in the days when this parable was first told, in that part of the world, when you were invited to a wedding and when you approached the door of the wedding venue, you could not get past the door unless you wore a garment provided by the host of the wedding and that is the same with heaven. You cannot enter heaven unless you wear a garment provided by God. Back in those days, they did not allow people in weddings in their everyday clothes or even in fancy clothes to enter that wedding. That person had to put on a garment provided by the host. You could come wearing Louis Vuitton. You could come wearing Prior. You could come wearing a three-piece suit but you still couldn't get in. Unless you were wearing the garment provided by the host of the wedding. Now look at this next verse. Because the king comes and spots a man who is trying to enter the kingdom of God, not wearing the garment he provides at the door. The king says in verse 12, And he said unto him, Friend, how chamest thou in hither and not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. The king essentially said, why are you trying to get into the wedding another way than the one and only way that I have prescribed? Verse 13. 
Then send the king to the servants. Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now I've told you this parable to show an example of a group of people that will not be allowed to enter heaven. This is a group of people who try to get into heaven any other way, except the way God has prescribed you see. For you to enter heaven, you will have to be dressed in the garment of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You cannot be caught up in the heaven, dressed up in your own garment of self-righteousness. You would be surprised at the amount of people who openly say that I am a good person. I live a good life. I don't cheat on my wife. I provide for my family. I have never killed anyone. I don't commit adultery. I don't fornicate. I am sure I will go to heaven because I live a good enough life. If your salvation is pinned up on your behavior and your own conduct, you are just like the man cast into the outer darkness. The Bible is clear. No one, absolutely no one, enters the kingdom of heaven on how good they Quote, live or unquote. how holy they live. You do not enter heaven because of your morality. You don't enter heaven because you pay your taxes. You don't enter heaven even because you follow the Ten Commandments. You enter the kingdom of heaven because you are wearing the garment presented by God Almighty. And that is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, I love Jesus. If you will not accept this garment, if you attempt to enter the kingdom of God through your own works and your own achievements and through how good you live, you will be left behind. Unfortunately, some people perceive this teaching as being a license to sin. And if you perceive this sermon as a license to sin, I encourage you to question and examine yourself to see whether you are truly in the faith. Someone who is truly born again cannot live life like hell itself. The new birth will not allow you to do so. This sermon is to highlight our desperate dependency on our Lord Jesus Christ. I seriously believe that we will truly appreciate what Jesus did for us on the cross on the last day. When we see billions of people being cast into utter darkness, you will thank Jesus that day like never before for what he did for you on the cross. The garment was purchased for you on Calvary by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When he died for your sins and my sins, do you know what this tells me? This tells me that salvation is not about you. Salvation is not about praying a prayer once in your life. It is about Jesus Christ. It's all about him and no one else. When death comes to knock at your door, and it will, all you have to hold on to is a name of Jessel's. I have never seen him, but I know him in my spirit. He's a good God. You will have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb and clothed in his righteousness. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Your good works are not the way. You following the law is not the way. Jesus is the way. You can't get around him and enter heaven. Why do you think so many churches are attempting to remove Jesus out of their pews? It is that very spirit of Antichrist. Without Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. Without Jesus Christ, there is only darkness, despair and death. Because all life flows from him. You must go through Jesus. You have to do business with him. So, the first warning sign you are not going to be allowed into heaven is that you are depending on anything else for your salvation except the finished work of Christ, Jesus on the cross, and you have not put his garment of righteousness on. Because the truth be told, if you do not have the righteousness of Jesus Christ on, you are no different to a Pharisee. Where self-righteousness is, pride is not too far behind. God resists the proud. James 4, 6, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. If there is one thing you don't want, and I don't want, is to live a life with God against us. You must fight pride. 
and defeat it before it defeats you. God resists the proud, just the same way he resisted the devil. But he gives grace to the humble and exalts them. It is pride that makes a person believe that they can earn or work their way to heaven.